Um, hello, everyone. So uh, thanks for coming in uh, for your time. And um, today we are going to talk about service fabric um, that um, you, you, of course, know about SAP Cloud Platform that we have released. We have gone public a few weeks back. We are on Amazon now. Um, and um, by the end of this year, we will also be on Azure and uh, also will be on GCP. So uh, these are the places you will find SAP Cloud Platform. Go have your own trial there. Um, experience what SAP is doing in this. Our Cloud Platform is, is completely based on Cloud Foundry. So get yourself a trial, try some Docker instances, and see how it works. My name is uh, Krishanu Biswas. Um, I'm one of the engineering manager at SAP. And uh, I'm Shashank. I work as an architect with the team here. Right. So today our uh, topic uh, will be to, um, to have a look at service fabric and um, uh, how do we manage basically enterprise grade services um, within SAP um, uh, on a, for the Cloud Foundry applications basically. So moving on, um, some motivation. So what is a kind of service fabric? I think every enterprise grade Cloud Foundry application, so if you are building a Cloud Foundry application, you invariably probably have used one or the other services. Uh, I mean backing services, right? So maybe a Postgres, maybe a MongoDB, maybe a Rabbit, um, or maybe a Redis or something like that. Um, so every application needs one or the other uh, kind of services, stateful, stateless. Now, um, the point is that <clears throat> how do you provision, manage, and operate these services, right? Um, just think about um, a developer comes in and um, he wants to quickly kind of test his application, try his application, code his application around, um, and he needs one of the Postgres service immediately so that he can go on, you know, rather than going back to IT asking for a full-fledged deployment of a Postgres, like five terabytes, and that'll take time, right? So it's the power that now goes in the hand of the developer. You yourself, you can start as a developer your own Dockerized Postgres service, and you start code, coding your application, right? So that's where the experience starts for SAP Cloud Platform. And um, then uh, when the developer is kind of ready, he sees that his application is working fine, and then he can go about creating a more robust uh, Postgres or a Mongo uh, that is like more production grade, uh, having all production level qualities like high availability, uh, failover, um, and, and, and stuff like that, right? So that's the cycle. You start as a developer, you immediately start off with the service that you need, and we are all talking about service here. The question that you need to ask in your organization um, is like, how fast can I provision such a service? Right? How easy it is to provision such a service. I mean, we are not, we are talking about cloud. We are not in the traditional IT, mm -hmm. right? Where you talk to the IT, you tell that, you know, I need so-and-so service, and this is my specification. My department will be using this, that, so many networks and IPs I need. No, it's that days are gone. Now it's in your hand. So you pull up a service, connect your application to that service, and start working. And um, here what we are trying with Service Fabric is making that pinpoint easier for you that if you are a Cloud Foundry um, application developer, just quickly can pull up your own instance and can start working on that. Um, manageability, how efficiently can you update, upgrade, monitor? Now you have your own instance running, right? Let's say a Postgres instance running. It's like kind of five VMs with all high availability and uh, failover mechanism all in build. Quickly you will realize that you know um, managing this system becomes a nightmare. And this is just one system. And what if, if you have hundreds of such systems? So in your company, there could be many departments, and all of them are using their own Mongo, Postgres, Rabbit, and they are like all three to five node uh, virtual machines running. Um, and the question is, how do you manage them? How do you update them? Right? How does the operators operate them? Right? If there is a stem cell update, how do you do that? So quickly you run into this kind of problems and then you start thinking um, maybe there is something or some tool that could help me here doing this uh, in an automated fashion, right? Um, service fabric is not alone. So service fabric is all about provisioning, managing, and operating service, I said. But without the services, service fabric is nothing, right? So you need high quality services as well. So Postgres, MongoDB, these services should have their own service qualities in build that we talked about. Resilience, failover, 
scale, all of this, the service should provide. And they are the Bosch releases that we have. So Service Fabric understands any kind of Bosch release. You give them a Bosch release, it'll deploy for you. Right? And then all of a sudden you have a full-fledged service running for your organization. Um, experience we talked about from development to production, right? Um, and then multi-cloud. That's, that's one thing that is important. So these services um, have certain qualities or the way they are, um, they basically get spawned. It has a touch point with the underlying IaaS. Now, the way it gets spawned on AWS doesn't work the same way on Azure. Mm -hmm. And now Service Fabric takes care of this, right? So all that you have and need to have is a Service Fabric and allow it to deploy services um, on multiple clouds the way you like it. Yeah, if it is on GCP, it'll spin the same Postgres cluster on GCP, it'll do the same for Azure. You don't have to care for, you just go onto the cloud or pick your cloud and you are multi-cloud that way with Service Fabric. So welcome to Service Fabric and it's an open source contribution from SAP. Um, you can start using it. Um, uh, we have our next repo update uh, coming up in, in August and uh, would like to receive your feedback also on that. With that, moving on. Um, so service, fa service Fabric is Service Factory. So that's a fabric is with a K. Uh, it's called Service Factory. Basically, so service factory, it's, it's, it's a kind of a manufacturing, service manufacturing machine, right? It's, it's kind of, it's churning services for you. So creating service instances for you, right? That the application can connect and can consume the services. So it provisions, it manages and it operates service instances at scale for Cloud Foundry applications in an automated and managed way, which means to say, when your application is up and running, you also need to know how the application, how the, how the service is doing. You know, what is the CPU usage at this point in time? Is there anything alarming? Is the memory usage going fine? Is, it, is your Postgres running out of disk space, right? And then you can monitor all of this. And if it, if it goes beyond certain thresholds, you can raise alerts that your operators come to know that something bad has happened to the system, or at least going to happen to the system. And then you can take a call accordingly. You know, if the disk space is kind of uh, you're going out of disk space. The operator can move you to the next plan. So maybe 800 GB Postgres to two terabytes Postgres, maybe, right? So you can take actions. Um, so you need all of this. And that enables seamless application development and deployment experience uh, for an organization um, using services. So, so from a single node Docker service instance for development to multi-node highly available clustered setup for production environment. Service Fabric is there. So integrated monitoring, alerting, and logging, including audit logging, of course, which is very important. Who is using your database? What actions he is taking on your database? It needs to be logged for audit reasons. And that is built in. Backup and restore. So you have all of these instances now all around in your organization. Some Postgres is running, some Mongo is running. How do you take backup of all these instances? Yeah, your department, some of your business department asked you to give them a Mongo, you gave it. But now what if suddenly some bad thing happens? How do you bring the system back? So Service Fabric takes backup behind the scene and in an incremental way, right? So it's a delta backup. The snapshot it takes, it keeps taking. So you can go back to any point in time and restore your system if something bad happens to your system, right? Um, update and upgrade, we talked about it. Right? The system update and upgrade, it's, it's a continuous process. If a security patch has to be applied, if a new stem cell update that has come in, that needs to be applied, Service Fabric can do that on all the instances. And of course, the security is, is very important. So that's, that's what it's Service Fabric. Any question at this point in time on what Service Fabric is capable of? So this is what it does. It does, it manages services. It provisions, not only provisions, it manages and operates all these services. So this is how it looks like, yeah? So from your CFCLI, you're a developer, um, you basically tell Service Fabric that, hey, give me a Docker VM, right? I mean, give me a Docker instance of Postgres. And there are certain, then Service Fabric basically talks to Swarm, the Swarm manager, and then Swarm then puts this service that you have asked for into one of the Docker VMs, right? So a lot of different types of Docker containers reside inside each VM, each Docker VM. 
this Docker VMs then has a lot of containers running all different kinds of services. And one of your development service is also running there. So connect to it, you, you know, build your prototype or develop your application the way you want. The other kind of service when you are done uh, with your development, you then tell Service Fabric, hey Fabric, now give me a production uh, grade Postgres. And then Service Fabric talks to Bosch. It tells Bosch, can you just pin a cluster of Postgres for me? And that Postgres is basically, let's say, five to seven. It depends on your Bosch release. It could be five to seven VMs together, and which is like high, highly available. And um, yeah, and with this particular Bosch release, with this this virtual machines, we also inject an agent inside. So Fabric and the agent can then talk to each other. Fabric can ask the agent, okay, how are you doing? Is it all good with you? Agent can also take certain metrics and events out of the virtual machine and can send it to the central monitoring um, system. We have Grafana for this, right? So um, it goes to Riemann, and then Riemann stores it into Influx, mm -hmm. and from there Grafana pulls up and shows, we will see that in some time, how does the monitoring look like? But that's how the communication takes place, right? So you have broker, a service fabric broker, uh, which talks to Swarm for Docker services, which talks to Bosch for a more production grade services. And uh, it's a matter of um, uh, seconds or a minute uh, when your service is up and running, the cluster is up and running, right? So you have a service now, you connect to it. And then you see, uh, let's, so this is, this is the big picture. And there you see that IS blob store, that is basically the place where all your snapshots or your backups get stored, right? The service fabric keeps taking backup of your volume, right? The Postgres data, whatever you have on the volume, on the disk, has to be preserved, and these backups are stored somewhere. So on Amazon, we are storing it on S3. On OpenStack, we are storing it in Swift. Right? That's, that's how it is, so that's why that particular piece. So um, if, if this, this is a very high-level picture. Let's get a little bit into the details of what it is doing and how is it doing. So Shashank, uh, maybe the, mm -hmm. take us through that. Thanks for the great introduction of Service Fabric. I think, I guess you guys are finding it interesting. Mm -hmm. So let's go over the brief architecture, what it means in terms of components, first of all. So I think everyone here is aware of what the Cloud Controller is and what the CF APIs are primarily. So the reason uh, we have Service Fabric built over the Cloud Controller or the Service Broker V2 APIs is primarily to have the lifecycle managed by Cloud Controller. So there is nothing much difference in terms of CF managing the instances here primarily. So if you look the call trace, it starts from the Cloud Foundry side on the extreme left. If you see there's a Cloud Controller, and then we have the CF APIs which invoke the broker. The broker is nothing but the service fabric itself. It's a Node.js process which is running deployed as a Bosch release. And this service fabric broker can then talk to two systems primarily. It can talk to Bosch via the HTTP APIs to the Bosch director, or it can talk to Docker Swarm again over HTTP. So as Krish explained, primarily there are two scenarios. For Docker Swarm, we are kind of looking into development kind of instances, uh, single node Docker instances. And via Bosch, it is more productive usage. Like you get a complete cluster with HA and all kinds of service qualities. So what you see here is from the broker, we trigger a lifecycle operation on Bosch. We deploy the manifest. And then it creates instances of Postgres, MongoDB, Redis, which are cluster in themselves deployed on different virtual machines. All these systems can then talk to infrastructure components like Grafana, Elk. Grafana is where it is pushing all its monitoring information, like what kind of events are happening, what is the health, how many connections, let's say, for Postgres are active at certain point in time. And then we also log into the audit log or Elk stack, primarily the life cycle, like when the process was started, if the process is shut down, all kinds of DDL or DML statements if you want to configure there. Then you see on the service fabric component itself, there's a monitoring agent, which is also capturing the health of service fabric process itself. Like how the service fabric, is it too many connections on the service fabric node? Do we need to scale this? So all these kind of data is also pushed to Grafana via the service fabric uh, monitoring agent. So compared to the previous slide, this is a more detailed view on how the components sit into the infrastructure. So if you see on the top 
you see the Cloud Foundry CLI and then you have the IS layer where your elastic load balancers in case of AWS are sitting and then you have all kinds of uh, object store volumes, uh, object store uh, uh, volumes and then the compute part of it. On the left side again, the, uh, Sorry. let's go back. On the left side again, it's the cloud controller and the uh, Diego runtime, primarily it's from the apps perspective and the CF runtime primarily, which again talks to the broker over the standard interfaces and broker internally either pushes a Bosch deployment to the Bosch director or interfaces with SOM for Docker containers. So a little bit talking more details about how Docker is working here. So you see on the extreme down on the Docker uh, bracket where you see the Docker engine, which is the Docker daemon, and then you have a storage. So we kind of uh, wrote our own volume driver, which is abstracting the actual volume which you get from EBS or Cinder, and this is called the LBM driver, the logical volume driver. So what we do, we create a sparse file on top of the actual volume we get from Cinder or EBS, and then carve out logical volumes for each container. So we save on cost. As we said, this is all for development purposes. So the idea was here to save costs rather than giving each individual container a proper volume. And this also helps in quota management, right? Yes. So again, the idea is that uh, you enforce quotas on the disk. So one container can only take certain resources. So if you see no Docker, primarily it enforces two kinds of quotas on the CPU and memory but not on the actual volume or the disk storage. So this is how we enforce that a container cannot exceed a certain usage of the disk itself. So on the service instance deployment, then you see there are a couple of agents. Apart from what we have as the main process, like a Postgres instance running, you have also a Bosch agent and a service agent. So Bosch agent is something which is provided by Bosch, automatically deployed on the VM. The service agent is what we package alongside. So it's a job which is co-located, which means it is on the same VM on which your process or service process is running, like a Postgres, Redis, or MongoDB. So what it does primarily is that it provides an interface to the service fabric broker. So I can query the agent over HTTP and check what is the status or what is the health of the particular process. Or else I can trigger certain operations on it, like a backup and restore. So the way we have implemented is the service agent exposes certain capabilities like it can do backup, it can do restore, or it can do certain other operations. These capabilities are then queried by the broker or the Node.js or the service fabric, and then accordingly it invokes those operations on these specific nodes. So moment the broker uh, kind of spins a cluster of a service, it also schedules certain backups, mm -hmm. um, schedule with, and tells that, you know, at this certain point in time interval, you. Keep yeah, taking backups. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so just, we have just, a little slide on, a little that. Bit, uh, on the same slide back again. Mm -hmm. So, if you see on the extreme left, uh, extreme right down, you have the jump box, which is our bastion. Primarily, it allows for the ops mm -hmm. to see get into the virtual machine. So, it's like an isolation. Not everyone can get get into the virtual machine. It is only via the jump box where you allow entries. Go ahead. So this is a simple uh, sequence diagram on how a service creation is working. I try to keep it simple, but there are many complexities which are handling or which are being handled behind the scenes, like creation of security groups and all. But in principle, what it is doing from the CFCLI, you trigger a creation of an instance. The call goes to the cloud controller, which invokes the service broker. So in case of Bosch, what it does primarily, it generates a manifest, a manifest which is acceptable by Bosch, right? which Bosch can understand. So what it does is also inject some kind of network configuration because we control how, when, how, much, how many IPs for a deployment you're getting at this point in time. And then once the manifest is generation, you call Bosch director over the HTTP API and trigger the deployment. Yes. So, so I think you kind of touched upon the monitoring and logging. So this is specific to, let's say, a service instance. So what all capabilities we need from a service instance perspective to say that it has good SLAs, right? So it needs to tell its health, not just health of the VM in terms of like the CPU, memory, and disk, but it also needs to tell how the process or a specific type of a process is behaving. So we give the example of Postgres, the active connections, the wall logs, or the specifics of a Postgres process, or Redis as an example, or RabbitMQ, let's say how, how is the queue size looking? 
uh, are the queues exhausted? So all these kind of metrics can be exposed and then pushed to the Grafana tool. Mm -hmm. So you go on by the time I'll just yeah. connect to monitoring. Uh, okay. Thing, yeah. So and then similarly we have uh, the Elk stack where we are capturing the logs. Uh, we use Arsys log daemon as the initial ingestion point from the VM perspective where all these logs are captured into Arsys log and then pushed to the Elk stack where you can look into Kibana and then there is also an integration from our side. Let's say you triggered some operation and which has failed. So that event is registered into Grafana, but from Grafana you can go to Elk and see and trace, establish the traceability that what has actually happened via the logs. So. So this is again uh, the backup and restore process where we said that there's an agent which is sitting on the particular VM and it is exposing the capabilities that, let's take an example of Postgres. So there is a master and a slave node, but we all only want master to take the backup or do the snapshotting. So the, only, the master only exposes the capabilities that I can do the backup uh, operation for you. So when service fabric queries that which of the nodes can do a backup, only the master reports its status back and then adequately you can invoke that operation over an HTTP call and uh, do the snapshotting. So currently you see the snapshots, what we kind of depict here, we use the infrastructure layer rather than the service specifics to do a backup. Like we could have done via PG dump or something, but we rely on the snapshot mechanism of the IS layer in case of OpenStack as well as AWS here. I think this is the most critical part and uh, how do you now, let's say you want to use Service Fabric and you have a certain set of services. So how do you onboard a service? So currently there is a defined process for us where we have a lifecycle tool if you see on the left side. So we have a lifecycle tool and we use certain manifest for the Service Fabric, which internally uses two files. I'll explain what is the purpose of these two files. We call one is a EJS file and one is an ERB file. So we parse through the EJS file and evaluate the ERB file and then inject the template into the actual service fabric manifest. So what this means is that if you want to bring in your service, what you need is the upper three components. You need a Bosch release, you need to give us an EJS file, and you need to give an ERB file. So ERB file is where you define your plans of the service, right? So let's say a, uh, a database plans, this is the memory, this is the CPU you need for a specific plan. All the plans are defined in the ERB file. And in the EJS file, you define the manifest template, what Bosch can accept, right? How many VMs you want? What is the job definition for your release? So all these things are captured in the EJS file. Finally, Service Fabric creates one configuration file out of whatever services it needs to take care of. It parses through the plans and then injects the template for the specific service in the properties. So finally, when you invoke via the cloud controller, it reads through Service Fabric, reads through that configuration file, and triggers the manifest generation of the specific service. Yeah, coming back to the advantages we have via this uh, using Service Fabric. So as I said, that we use the complete Cloud Foundry programming model here. So there's nothing like we invent some APIs here. You always go via the CC APIs or the Cloud Controller APIs, which has CF service create. Maybe we will show you the demo. Second, we tried to keep this component as stateless as possible. The reason being that we can then scale it horizontally. So whatever state we need, we keep it either in the Bosch or let's say in case of Docker, it's in the Swarm. So we query the state rather than maintaining our state ourselves in a DB or something. Then we have done some work around uh, the agent framework. As I mentioned, it provides a pluggable agent framework. So what does it mean? So primarily the thinking behind is that any agent you deploy has three operations or three capabilities to do. It has to collect data right, from a source, it has to process data, and then it has to dispatch that. So take an example of uh, you are collecting some statistics from a VM, so we have written a health collector which is constantly checking how the VM is behaving. And then we process not all data has to be dispatched, as an example to Grafana or any other uh, monitoring stack. We process, drop certain data, and then we dispatch what is needed. If there is some aggregation or something which needs to be done then and there, we do it at this level. Yeah. So. Okay. So, um, for the sake of time, let's take a look at some of the observability. So you have we told that right there are certain systems running, and you want to know 
what's happening within that, within that system, yeah, what's the load and all that. So I will try to pull up. Okay, so, so this is the dashboard and what it shows um, that on the left hand side there's a swarm manager and I'm running it from our uh, staging landscape so you'll see it all live basically what is happening. Um, swarm manager availability and then it shows the broker availability. So you know the broker is up and the swarm is up, that's what it says. Backup wise, the backup stats if you see it says that there are 15 backups succeeded in the last I think one hour and uh, the two backups failed, right? So you, you, you can now go inside and check uh, in the Kibana system, uh, okay, what happened at this point in time, because everything is logged. You can say that why these backups failed and what can you do about it, right? So you that's can the traceability it. part here. That is the traceability part. Okay, so that was the backup stat. Now, if this is um, Postgres and MongoDB, basically, again, it's part of backup, it says that there are around 500 backups for PostgreSQL that's been taken. And um, for the MongoDB, that's around, uh, how much, what is the number? It's, it's around, around 60. Yeah, those many backups have been taken so far. And backups are important, right? I mean, that's your last line of defense, right? So before you lose your system, I mean, you have to ensure if there is nothing, then at least that the backups have been taken. Mm -hmm. this, this is the something that you should really be worrying about. Broker system health, it shows the memory usage in percentage and the CPU usage in percentage, how's the system doing. Um, if you see at the Docker, you know, the Docker images, you see that there are total two Docker nodes, Docker VMs, now currently existing on this particular landscape, and there are around 89 containers running, right? So, so this is the aggregated view of uh, how many containers you are running, how many nodes you are running there. Right. Um, so and now if you basically want to see like you know what are the services and you want to now go one level down what you saw now is, is like an aggregation you go one level down and um, you want to see like particular instances so one one box here the green boxes are nothing but one one clusters and these are all Postgres dedicated clusters which is running within inside SAP. right so and you see that you know they are kind of these clusters are up in good health and that gives you a good feeling. Um, but of course, you can also drill uh, one level down. Now you can get into this cluster and see like what's happening within the cluster, right? And uh, this shows you now on this particular cluster uh, of Postgres, uh, what is the disk usage? What is the memory usage? Uh, so the usage is, is, is pretty low here, but you can see that, you know, as there's a lot of vital met met metrics um, which is coming up. So, so the database of bulk data hit and the number of connections here, concurrent active DB connections on this particular database. So, you, you know, it, it gives you a lot of visibility here on uh, from a very high level, aggregated level to drilling down into a particular instance. And of course, you can set your thresholds, uh, wherein if it crosses that thre threshold, it will just alert you up. Yeah, on and it supports the stream processing here on the Grafana side or the Raymond yeah. side primarily, where you can define closure scripts to trigger alerts. Right. Um, I, I think we are now running short of time now. Um, but yeah, when you have this, um, you, you can of course um, go ahead and try this out. Um, this is our uh, repo and um, please have a look. Um, Maybe you can just open the templates, the templates once and uh, which template? The, uh, service a big product component. Yeah. Yeah. So if you use this is what I was talking about, the onboarding part. So this is the grand template what we have here, mm -hmm. right? And which will parse through the NDB, will open the EJS file and the ERB files for the services and show. But this is what is responsible for creating this big configuration for service fabric. So if you just open the ERB, go into the services directory, and take any of, let's say, Postgres uh, EJS file or ERB file. Open the ERB file also, we'll show. So this is where if you see all this metadata about your plans and other things are coming into play, right? So how do you define the container plans? How do you define the managed plans or the dedicated instance plans? So finally, what Fabric will do is the manifest template, the bigger one gets parsed and then all this information is just made part of one configuration file. 
right? So then when someone makes a request that I want to create an instance for a specific type of service and for a specific plan, it reads through that configuration, what it means, what template it needs, what configurations it needs, and then adequately generates uh, the Bosch manifest or the Docker, it pulls the Docker image and creates one. Yeah, so the point is if you have your own service, that it's a Bosch service that you want to get deployed on your landscape, bring it in, Service Fabric can deploy this for you and can mon monitor and manage this for you. Yeah. You need three files, point. one is ERB, EJS, and then your Bosch release. That's all you need. Yeah, so our next step is to make this uh, onboarding even more easier. And um, we want to bring in also this out of band Bosch deployments, um, which, which means that if you already have a Bosch deployment and you want to bring it in within the ambit of Service Fabric so that you get all the advantages of Service Fabric, you can also do that. Um, Bosch 2.0 compatibility, we, we, have, we have to get the service bundles. So there are multiple services if they can talk to each other. Right. Yeah, so, so the idea uh, here is, let's say today the model of uh, Cloud Foundry is app to service binding, but it misses a notion of service to service binding primarily. So if you deploy a certain service and you want to consume a managed service, how do you do that? Right. So I think this is uh, in lines of that idea here. Right. Okay, so with that we come to the last <laughs> slide here and um, try SAP Cloud Platform. Yeah, you, you get certain services, like Docker services uh, for free, and um, you get your own org in space there, build your own application against these services, have fun. Um, for Service Fabric, you can go to our uh, Service Fabric repo, an SAP repo, Service Fabric, just have a look. Um, and um, yeah, and um, you can also know more about SAP's contribution to Cloud Foundry in that link. So this will be uploaded, of course, you will get to have access to all these links. They're all public. A lot of things SAP is doing today for uh, Cloud Foundry. There's a lot of contribution happening, including contribution to the core Cloud Foundry uh, itself. Uh, but other than that, Service Fabric and, and there are many more other such projects like Abacus and all that that SAP is contributing to. So take, take a look and stay tuned. So our next repo update is going to happen on 21st. And then on, I think we will work together um, to kind of build a better Service Fabric from here on. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. for your time. Yeah. Thank you.